Hello everyone, reporting today for First Dickens Now. I'm Ab Haas and with me here today is 18438 Wolfpack Machina from Beverly, Massachusetts. As you can tell by the absolutely enormous amount of trophies in front of us, there is just so much to talk about with this robot. They were the first seed and winning alliance captain of the Ochoa division at our Houston Power Play World Championship. And Inspire Award winner, champion of the entire event out of 192 teams. There is just too much to cover with this team. I cannot wait to jump into it on Behind the Bot. This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. Annie Mark has parts and products designed specifically for First Robox competition and First Tech Challenge teams. Many Annie Mark staff are first alumni, mentors, and event volunteers. Visit AnnieMark.com for all your educational robotics needs. Kettering University has over 25 pre-college camps and learning experiences available from computer science and engineering to inspiring future women engineers, leadership development, and first-based camps for first graders to graduating high school seniors. Magna and GM sponsor camp fee scholarships are available. Email ctaylor at kettering.edu for more information. Okay guys, let's start with your general match strategy and game strategy for the overall season. You guys know there are just so many designs out there and I'm sure this is not the first design or only design you came up with. So why did you guys settle on this robot from what we've seen publicly? It is what you've been running pretty much the entire season with minor upgrades here and there. So walk us through that. Um, so at the start of the season, we took a lot of time to really break down the game from a strategy standpoint. So what we would do with um, one of our captains was play simulated matches where we, matches where we were playing cones to kind of see where the most valuable placements were. And from that, we got a sense of two things that were really important. One was a really consistent auto. So we, that's why we want to have the intake slides on the front. So Caden, if you can hold the robot, Owen can extend the slides here. Um, this is just our teleop extension, uh, This is, which is much shorter than our auto extension. In auto, we can go over a full three tiles, which allows us to hit the safe pole, giving us a much more consistent auto. But what's really important about this design is we can lock it back in for teleop and turn into this small maneuverable mechanism chassis, which allows us to spread and cover the field um, to ensure ownership points and circuit points. So that was kind of the big idea that guided our strategy. Yeah, and you know, last season you guys ran that whole belted suspension drive system, and you got it working very, very well, if I might say so. So, so obviously it was a conscious decision to switch to that Mechanum drivetrain for this season. So what was the logic behind that? Yeah, so the logic behind that, um, last year the suspension was incredible. I think everyone on the team really enjoyed developing it and learning a lot more technical skills through using it. But we ended up um, having a lot of problems with it because we had spent so much time during the season developing it and it was so mechanically complex that it hurt us um, competitively. So this year we really focus on only adding complexities in the places that really needed it, mm -hmm. um, which led to the Mechanum drive base. Yeah, and so, you know, let's move on to your intake system. You know, you guys, as you said, have over six feet of extension. So walk us through just the general slides. How, which slides are they? How do you uh, mount them together? And how do you power them? Yeah, so we have six stages of Masumi slides on both sides of the intake. And we have, if you could extend them really quick. Yeah and we cut our own custom polycarb inserts for the uh, three millimeter pulleys in there and we also printed our own uh, string guards which prevents the string from coming out side to side or up and down and that has helped us a lot throughout the season. Yeah, and so now going on to just the sensors you use here, are you guys just using your motor encoders to power it? And also, like, what actuators are you using to power your intake extension? So we use seven different types of sensors and 17 sensors overall. And really what we took advantage during Autonomous this season was making sure we use all the data that's available to us. So not only does that mean you get the encoder ticks of a slide, but you can also log the velocity of your slides. So for example, we detect when our slides have stopped and depending on their current extension we know if we were interfered with or if uh, we've reached the cone stack. Yeah no that's fantastic and what how are you powering your slides right like what motors are you using how many uh, and how does it work? Yeah so we have um, they're kind of really hidden but on the back we have two uh, I believe 1150 rpm go build a motors that drive a set of pulleys that are connected with the steel axle that goes all the way through. And we have a very similar system that drives our depositor slides because we just found it to be very reliable and straightforward. So we have these two motors here and here that power one central axle if you want to put it up, Kaden. 
Yeah. Yep. And so now talking about your arm, wrist, claw, just the whole end effector on your intake subsystem, walk us through it and then we'll jump into how it's changed throughout the season. Um, so our claw is probably the part of our robot that changed the most over the course of the season, but we really like the design we ended on because we think it's really elegant. So I think one of the really unique things about our claw this season is our ability to pick up down cones. And the way this works is it's actually fairly simple. It's just these two servos that power a virtual four bar with an extra servo in here to control claw tilt. And what that allows us to do is rotate the claw down and in this position we can intake a claw with this really super wacky movement even with just kind of a sort of simple mechanism mm -hmm. it allows us to intake claws into uh, cones docked over cones in two directions which we think is really powerful yeah and so you know for knocked over cones that's absolutely fantastic and seeing you guys do normal cones that are just upright you are way way faster and so can you walk us through what degrees of freedom you have that are involved in that process yeah, so um, one of the reasons why we're able to intake so fast during tally up, even though we have um, a not active intake, we just have a claw, is we have this uh, two-stage brake beam system here. So we have an initial stage that we use primarily during tally up. So as soon as the cone has basically um, come into the claw, like as soon as the claw will be able to grab it, it shuts as fast as it can. And then secondly, uh, we have a second set for reliability that's up here. So that one will only, um, we use primarily an auto to detect if we've missed a grab or anything like that. Yeah, and so on the topic of that, let's talk about your guys' intaking process in the autonomous. I think the most, like the craziest thing in the room is your guys' match where you were bumped by the other robot, actually pushed all the way basically back to your starting position and recovered. So walk us through that, the logic behind that, how you guys sure. implemented it, and then we'll go on to the intake and the sensors. Of course. So as I talked about earlier, not only do we take the raw input, but we also get other valuable raw input like velocity. So as for the example you're referring to, what we detected is we were both out of position and our velocity was zero. That means another robot had pushed us there, in which case we pull a maneuver where we drive away and drive towards the cone stack to hopefully bump them back over a line and be in the scoring position. Awesome, yeah. And so now talking about your intake subsystem, you mentioned that you have the two-stage beam brake uh, system. Do you have any other sensors you use in your intaking and how do you combine all of those sensors and fuse them together? Yeah, so this year we really focused on using kind of simpler or like built-in sensors because one of the big takeaways from last year is that uh, using like I2C sensors, like we used distant sensors and we used a color sensor last year to detect if we had a block in our intake mechanism. And we found that that both was bad for loop times in our code, which made like PID less effective, but it was also just kind of unreliable because we had to be looking for a specific color. So we really focused on super simple sensors like these brake beams that just you know, either they are broken or they are not. It's very simple. There's not a lot of tuning you have to do. But we also use, for instance, current draw on these slides. So we don't actually send the slides to a specific position. Um, the mechanical team designed through several iterations a really cool claw that's over-centered so we can really kind of slam it into the wall. So we actually just extend our intake out at, I think it's just power one, um, until the current draw just spikes and then we stop it. And that's how we know if we've hit the cone stack. Uh, and also we can use that in things like fail-safes for detecting, for instance, if a cone has gotten uh, jammed inside our intake, we can actually automatically clear that out. Yeah, I know that that's fantastic. And so now moving on to your transfer system, I see that you guys have that platform on top. You know, obviously you guys have the mechanical capability to do one where you just have it in your claw and then your deposit claw picks it up. But why did you go for that transfer platform and walk us through the transfer process? Um, so one of the things that we really we're keen on in our strategy this year was this two claw system for a couple reasons. One, it means our transfer is super reliable. We like having both of these claws um, so that, again, for the intake reliability, we can have that really good side claw and then also the top claw. And this way, with this system on the plate, we can ensure that one of the claws is always in control of the cone, which means mm -hmm. that if we get bumped in a match, we never lose it. But the really innovative part of it is that because of this two claw system in this plate, we can do what we call double capping, where we put um, a cone, uh, sorry, a beacon on top of a cone and then intake both and score them separately. I think we were one of the first teams to really try this out this season. Um, and it's really powerful because it gives us, at the end of the game, the capability in sort of the last few seconds to control two junctions because we don't have to go all the way back to the substation for another cone. Yeah, And so course. that's why we're really on that. Uh, yeah, you know, strategy. we've talked about it all the time on top 25 and recaps and everything. Definitely a fantastic strategy that I think has really positively impacted the game this season. So one thing I remember from last season, our MTI behind the bot, you guys were throwing around all these crazy numbers for every 
everything. You know, we increased our reliability by six times, our consistency, or our point scoring potential. So, talking about your transfer specifically, well, you know, talk talk some numbers with me. How have you guys improved it throughout the season, and what were some of the biggest ways you did that? Um, so, one huge feature was adding axons to the system um, that really speeded it up, but also um, counterbalancing these. I can't move it right now, um, but we have rubber bands on both virtual four bars, and that allows this to effectively oh, can't move it effectively um, not weigh nearly as much or at least not require as much torque out of the servos so I know um, in the beginning of the season this transfer system was about 1.3 seconds in autonomous we've cut it down to 0.35 seconds wow yeah that's that's just unreal you know you guys are always working on shaving off those last couple of milliseconds to make it as fast as possible so now really quick let's cover your deposit there are just as many degrees of freedom I think on that as you have on your intake so One give more. us an overview of that and then we'll talk about some of the really special features um, yeah, so our depositor uh, has gone through a lot of changes this season, but we started with the basic design of a virtual four bar on top um, with this linkage claw that also over centers when it has a cone in its grasp to ensure um, that we can't knock one out. Um, at the start of the season, it was just mounted rigidly, so it wasn't on a turret. You see Kitten struggling to open back the <laughs> servo back up. Um, but one thing that we have had the whole season, which maybe we should circle back to on the software side, is this downwards facing um, camera, which we use to detect the poles during auto. Um, but to that point, one of the things we really wanted was an auto to be able to score without moving. So after we had the basic mechanism of the virtual four bar scoring with the claw down, um, we knew we wanted to add a uh, turret, and this is how we got this really cool um, turret design in the middle. Yeah, and so uh, really quick, let's talk about your slides. I see that you guys use a much thicker string for your slides, on at least on the front side, than you do for your intake and for the back half of your slides. So walk us through that, why you guys did that, and then we'll move on. Yeah, so this front string is actually a bungee cord that we have um, tensioned. So you can see like the slides are staying up right now. The motors don't have to do any work. The robot was just turned on. It's not initialized or anything, though. And um, yeah, this bungee just takes a ton of load off the motors. It saves us a lot of uh, power during the match and um, allows us to move the mechanism a lot faster than we would otherwise. Yeah, and I guess the last thing we'll talk about, you know, uh, you mentioned the camera you guys have inside your claw, so let's talk about that briefly and then we'll wrap things up. Yeah, so uh, this is just a standard um, Logitech C920, um, and this essentially started when we were fooling around in our workshop really late at night, and someone was kind of just like looking down through a cone and realized that it makes a really good way of, <laughs> yeah, live reenactment, was realizing it made a really good way of actually seeing where the cone was, and so then we were talking like, do we want to use a distance sensor, color sensor, this seems kind of cool, and then we thought of using a camera. So the very first version of this, um, it looked directly down at like a 90 degree angle um, and all it did is move the robot translationally and that was really slow and it was just using like a PID and so then what we actually programmed is this inverse kinematic system so the arm actually rotates in sync with the slides to keep this at the same height while we extend and then when we added this turret um, it gave us essentially full 3D control <laughs> of where that endpoint is. So we use the camera, convert pixels to essentially just angles. Uh, we scan the junction just using OpenCV, thresholding for yellow. Because we're looking down, we don't have to worry about things in the background. And we then use the fact that that's an angular measure from here. We know the junction is somewhere a specific height beneath it. And so that gives us our exact distance to the junction. And then our inverse kinematics moves us exactly there. Yeah, that is just so, so impressive. And Wolfpack, you guys have been just insane this season. You know, you build better and better robots every single year. I can't wait to see what the rest of the, what the rest of the off season and next year has in store for us. Thank you so much for doing this interview. I think you guys are really making a difference in the community, really impacting first teams all around the world. Reporting for First Updates now, I'm Abbas, and with me here is Team 18438, Wolfpack Machina. This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. Kettering University has over 25 pre-college camps and learning experiences available from computer science and engineering to inspiring future women engineers, leadership development, and first-based camps for first graders to graduating high school seniors. Magna and GM sponsor camp fee scholarships are available. Email ctaylor at kettering.edu for more information. Animark is your one-stop shop for all your educational robotics needs. From mechanical, electrical, tools, and hardware, Animark has over 200 years of first-team experience and offers high-quality and affordable solutions for the robotics mobility and competition markets. Head on over to Animark.com to get started.
Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Watch our live shows at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Join our Discord at discord.gg forward slash first updates now and check out Fun FTC on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and First Updates Now on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter.